Paul B is bad guys, and today I'll kit bash and custom paint with a Gundam marker on a high gray Sengoku Ashray Gundam to make it a better version. Now let's start the video. High gray Sengoku Ashray Gundam released it in December 2013 and came from the Gundam Build Fighter series. Although I don't really like the Ashray design when I first saw them, but in Vietnam, people call him the National Gunpla because a lot of people like it, you know? And it's always a hot topic to show or talk about. With that being said, uh, I don't really like Ashray Gundam, but shout out to my co-worker Alvin Chun for giving me this free build kit. And uh, you know, look at the design, it's not that bad, but let's start disassemble this kit and clean the nub, shall we? Ah, uh, the safety nub on the VFIN is <laughs> kind of annoying for a person like me, so let's work on the head first, shall we? We're gonna start by cutting this part so it's easier to assemble the face when I remove the seam line. Start setting it with a metal file because it's gonna be easier to assemble the face right after we clean it. In addition, I am um, sharpening this detail as well just to make it look sharper a little bit. Also, it worked well for me to put it in the face like I said before. Mid the Harpy Salmon S. This small bottle can melt the plastic together, which is pretty necessary for a seam line removing progress. Uh, this reminds me of the memory I spilled half of the bottle on my table and melted my gaming laptop. Uh, yeah. Back to the progress, which is just supposed to have stripped the part by crimping them together, and this should allow the seam line to disappear after. Okay, let's be honest here, I don't know what part this is, but uh, I sand it down, clean it up more, and um, at the end I create a white detail just by using a metal file to sand it at the end. Yeah, sand it at this part, and um, here's the result, pretty much, I like it. Continuing by cleaning all the safety nub mark. And uh, of course, I have to sharpen some of them too, just to make them look better, I guess. Let brush all the dust off and uh, yeah. Wow, this face look more evil and more realistic than before. Wow. Of course, we gotta do the same thing with the uh, V-Fin. Give it a little bit sanding and uh, yeah, this looks okay too. It's good. Oh my god, look at all the plastic dust that I made. I guess it's time for me to... Uh... <laughs> Let's get back to the head. After the tin is dry for about like 3-4 hours, you can continue and use the sanding sponge to clean all the messy part. Matte work engraver 0.3. Uh, using this to create on the panel line that I over sanded and make it disappear. So, um... I have to grab it down and make it appear again because it's a pretty nice detail that Bandai gave us and give it a little bit of sand and voila! I do think this looks pretty good. What do you guys think? And now that I have all the part been sanded off video of course, let's just start assembling it together. Oh, ho, 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 ho. for an old kit like this, this looks pretty good. Of course, minus all the obvious sticker, but I think Bandai did a good job on separating the color. Time to bring out the big gun. Yo, Nguyễn Minh, nếu mà anh đang xem cái video này thì cái video này sẽ không tồn tại nếu anh không giúp em có bộ tay khỉ này. <laughs> okay, this is the third party model kit. The plastic feel pretty decent in my opinion. It also came with instruction as well. But um, we're mainly gonna focus on the pirate arm. Let's start building it.
Okay, the feeling when you assemble this kit is not bad. The plastic feel okay for third party kit, but you might want to put some effort and modify some join, especially for those 10 finger. Yeah, you have to do exactly with all 10 finger. Like, look at this. The, the thumb can even fit in the ball joint. So, of course, here you have to sand it out a little bit. And uh, just to make sure, I sand all the other pieces as well. And here are they putting in together. Just, I'm going to start assembly this in for you guys to look. Hey, hey, this looks pretty good. Oh my god, I think I just... Uh, I think I did it backwards, so let's just start turning them a little bit. Put the thumb in and yes, we have the fully articulated hand that you have to put effort in. Recreating the pirate arm on a high grade kit is not easy, but I'm grateful that they actually make this kit so I can actually do something like this. Although this uh, third party kit like I mentioned before, but the overall separate color part and assemble is pretty well done. Let's assemble this in and um, yeah, oh never mind. Now that we got both on, just let's assemble it to our ashtray. While the fifin keep falling off is pretty annoying too. I don't know what that happened to you guys, but it's okay. Just put it back in and uh, yeah, we're done. But uh, why is it looks kind of weird? Uh, I think it's because of the joint between the arm and the body. Let's fix that. Okay, you can start by cutting out a random runner. Give it a little bit sanding progress. And, um, you know, make sure you do two joint because you have two arm. Get it? Disassemble these part. And, um, yep. Pull the hole down. Plug the joint to the part. And just attach them to the gas tray. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> hey, here I use the thinner to mold the joint with the arm so it doesn't fall off because it's still kind of a little bit loose on this end. But yeah, just put thinner and push it in. Okay, I want to make this part stay on the parrot arm, but I don't want to just super glue it down and stick on it. I want to actually put it out and put it in whenever I want. So you can start by cutting down the crow type joint here until you have like a single straight piece, right? And then you can start by using a hobby shawl to cut out this part just to make it like smaller and fit nice and easy on the ashtray arm. But okay, this is a pretty annoying part to do on camera, so I have to cut out the videos. Of course, after cutting with a shawl, you actually have to sand it down to make it all flat. Okay, I, here I do the same thing with the bottom piece of the part. Okay, the main reason why I want to make it a single piece joint. So when you put out this part, you're going to actually just plug it in and the piece just going to stay there on the pirate arm. And you can put it out whenever you want. So Because we're going to put the arm strain to the body and um, I want to cut out this part. Because it's gonna limit the articulation of the Gundam since the Sengoku actually wear his shield in the back. But uh, <laughs> yeah, after all that work, we're finally done. Uh, fine. Let's start by washing all these parts so we can actually start painting it. Bam! Okay, that's what we all done. Let's just let it rest there like a baby and let it dry out by itself. Here I use the masking tape so I can mask out the spot that I want to paint. Like, most people think that the painting process is hard, but for me, I feel like the masking tape took more time. And anything is hard by itself, but you gotta practice, you know. And this time, I decided to use the Gundam marking paint 
and uh, let's change the nib of the Gundam marker with a special nib to get a better result. At least that's what I heard they said. I don't know. I don't really know about these products, but let's start shaking them up. Oh, oh shh. Let's close the cap first. Okay, I know what you're thinking right now. Like, what the heck is that angle that I just used to record my my painting stuff? But I didn't know it until I watched it again. So please just suffer with this for a little bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, the Gunner Market X is pretty good to use. That I, at least I use the Gunner Market Everest, and I feel like it's good because I think the Gunner Market X Royal Metallic Red flow really good, especially with the special nib that I attach it. Of course you have to buy it separately and it's not that expensive okay so we already encountered our first problem here is the the paint on the gunner marker dry easily and even though i put the gunner marker spectral nip i think it's better a little bit so i have a little bit more time to paint it but after a while you have to like check the marker again and then start pumping it out on a paper which is why you see me put a paper like that so i can test it out like this and yeah, you can start painting again. But uh, yeah, a lot of people don't like Gundam Marker since just they are bad and then they color faded easily. But I don't think so. Despite all the rumor, I want to try it to actually feel like it. But yeah, look at looking at the result. I feel like I pretty like it to be honest. And it's not that bad. It's decent. It's fast too. But yeah, like once Wiseman said. Gunpla is freedom, so you can use whatever you want. Look, see? It's pretty good looking, right? Let's take a break from painting and peel up the summer masking tape. Honestly, this is the first time I work with Gundam Marker Everest. Although there's some problem with it, but so far the color looks dope. But, oh yeah, look at this. Look at this color, it's not bad. I was, I was expecting worse to be honest, but it's not too bad, so... Yeah, let's let's start peeling some more to see what it actually look like. Okay, let's start by masking these parts up so I can start painting it with the uh, royal metallic red and the marker. Because who doesn't like metallic, right? Here. For the rest of these part, I just use the sticker that come with the Gundam to mask it down. Remember, you can always make use of the sticker band I give it to you. It's like a it's, it's like a free masking tape to us. Okay, it might hard to see it on the camera, but here I actually have to pump it again. And I, I do it to show you that it's actually happened a lot and it's pretty annoying to do. But as soon as you get it and get used to it, it's gonna be fine. The main point of the Gundam marker is to save time and you don't have to prime the part first. So you save a lot of time here just by waiting for a part to dry and you don't have to clean up every time you use an airbrush. Also you can change between color and color in like 5 seconds. And yeah I think that's a good deal for a guys that don't have no time but still want to paint Gundam like me. If anyone's out there just the same as me, put the comment in below so I know that I'm not lonely. Alright, let's see the result behind those masking tape. Hold up, eh, did I just peel the paint off? Alright, I think that the problem is because we didn't prime the part. I was pretty confident in gonna mark it when I heard it's go straight to plastic. I guess it's do work if you don't go like masking tape straight on it after. But yeah, I think a lesson learned. Hope you guys, you guys remember to prime it before painting. Don't be like me. Here I use a brush to paint smaller detail like this small blue dot. I mean green, but yeah, the paint came from the marker applied pretty good with a brush, and I like it. I, I honestly like it. Look at this, it's so good. And here, Citado Retributor Armor. Yep, gotta paint slowly to go. Using a gold paint to like paint these small colors actually feels so good. But let me tell you something. Yeah, I could have used the Gundam marker gold to paint, but I actually forgot that I had had it. <laughs> but I think it's because I use Citado color a lot, so I actually forgot it, but... Whoa... This looks... This looks so good. I like it already. Did you... Did you like it? Just... Just look at it. 
Oh my god. I think I think I fell in love just by looking at this. I don't I don't even want to work anymore. This looks too good. I, don't, I just want to finish this off right here. Here I paint all the black part with a spray can. I paint it with uh, Rosoleum black primer I think. So it's pretty good but I forgot to record it. It's not that I forgot but like look at me. Just 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 look at my face. Look at all the paint on my face. You you already got the answer. <laughs> uh, continue spraying the go part with the Gundam marker go. If you look closely here, I don't use the Gundam marker spectrum nib. I just use the normal nib that it come with. I want to try to see what is actually the different. And there's a lot of different. Firstly, the paint came out uneven, and it sprayed really hard. So. Also, like the second, the second reason is like you always have to keep pumping the ink so it can flow better, cause it's dry so fast. I don't know is it the problem with my marker or actually always that way. Maybe that's the reason why you guys say gonna markers suck, and I do agree on it. But but take a look, like the finish is not bad at all, right? Also, there's gonna marker X coming out, so I think it's gonna be better. When it comes to panel lining on the Gundam part or all the stuff, I usually prefer the fine tip marker over the panel light. I think the Tamiya panel light accent because I think I got used to it since I first started building Gundam. And it was like five years ago, and I always start panel light Gundam like that. I don't know if it's a safe time or not, but the marker here I use is the outline fine tip. But you can also use the Sakura fine tip or any other Gundam marker tip, uh, like Gundam marker fine tips to paint as well. But like here, you can see the finish is not bad at all, and it's actually pretty good looking because it's not uneven. You know what I mean, right? Because you can actually do it by hand, and this can like take time. But I think it's worth it if you like if you guys try to do it. Look at this, so good. And you can always finish it up with an eraser to clean up all the excess ink. This method works pretty well, but you gotta be careful because when you're rubbing the eraser on the surface, you don't wanna ruin the paint. So you have to try rubbing it easily. And but just just don't do it too hard. Just do it slow, nice and easy. Just do it slow and you get it. Let's assemble the sword to see what it look like, okay? Because why not? Everybody like a sword. Just put the sword in and yep, we are done. What do you guys think? I think the Gundam marker did a pretty good job. I wanna give a little bit point for me using it, but yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good and it saved a lot of time too. Okay, here I use super glue, the glue is on the face, and start by plugging it in the, you know, the head, because we erase the seam line, so we actually don't have any other way to plug in the face, so. Using super glue is fine, you can also use thinner, but I use super glue because it's easier to control. It took time to dry, but it's easier to control, you know what I mean? But, yeah, let's start by putting all the face in, all the beef in, yep, put it in, and, yeah. This looks pretty good. Let's start by top coating this boy up. Okay, here I use a gloss top coat to top coat this. To make it looks glossy, and I like glossy. Who doesn't, right? But I learned something that Gundam marker is really weak, so you can have to be careful when you apply top coat to it, especially the spray can type. I tried before out of video and it ruined all the paint jobs so I actually have to find a different way. Here I use like the pledge floor cloth at the substitute for a normal cloth top coat to test it out and this worked pretty good so I think any any cloth top coat uh, came out from the airbrush is fine. Just apply it like don't apply it too heavy just apply it like light coat. Here yeah, I applied the water slide decal with Mark Softer and Sutter. Start by cutting out these peat first. Of course you have to dip it in water and then I choose to just grab it and put it on the Sutter. Just push it down to the piece, angle it the right way. 
I think the decal part is the funniest part that I always like to do, but it's pretty hard to record it on camera to be honest. Here I use um, cotton warp to like just clean all the excess water out, and yeah, this looks pretty good. I have to speed, I have to time lapse this, and actually delete a lot of recording because seem like I cannot trying to focus the camera on the angle that I want when I do the decal, but it's fine. So after you all did all the decal, of course you have to cross top coat again. And um, I top coat it to protect the decal. And yep, after this, we are officially done. Wow, I think this looks really good. God. Of course, this part is from a spray can, but I think I applied some of the decal from the RG Ashray, and it actually looks really dope. Let's start by put all this part out, and we can begin to assemble this kit. Looking at the finished product, I can't say, but I'm proud of myself, and I'm pretty glad that I choose the gunner marker to do with this because. Recently, I don't have time and the gunner marker saved me a lot of time and give me a good result. So, yeah, look at this. This is something that I would never think that I would be able to achieve, but I finally got it, man. Look at all the pain. Can you believe it? It came straight out from a gunner marker. The stuff that people said it's bad. I think the finish looks clean. I think the Sengoku Ashray have a really heavy samurai vibe and I do like it a lot. I think it's quite a journey that brings us to the finish like this. You might compare it to the normal airbrush and think it's not a good job, but hey, it is what it is and in my opinion, this is something that an airbrush beginner can start with. I'm satisfied with this product and the finish, so maybe you can be satisfied with it too if you change your mind. Okay, so this time I paint the high grade Sengoku Ashray and kit bash it with the pirate arm came from the third party kit. I was surprised when the first Ashray model kit I painted and made were better than I expected. The Gunner Market finish is not as bad as I thought, even though there's still some problem here and there, but overall it's pretty good to use. I would recommend a small mini compressor instead of the, the air can that they give us to save the money. It's my first time work on painting and recording at the same time, so please forgive me for all the mistakes that I make. Sengoku Ashray with the powered arm paid again in Gundam Marker. I'll name this Sengoku Ashray Powered Up. See you later in the future video. Poby out.